Hey folks, welcome back. This is the second in a series of six videos where we look at the key definitions that you need to know for the National 5 Physics course. Now I'd recommend that you make your own flashcards from these videos where you write the word or the term on one side and the definition or the meaning on the other side. So let's get into it. So for the radiation topic, we kick off with the alpha particle. And an alpha particle is a particle made up of two protons and two neutrons. It is also the nucleus of a helium atom. So if you're asked to state what is meant by an alpha particle, you could write either of these to get the mark. Next we have the beta particle, and a beta particle is simply a fast moving electron. The next definition is for a gamma ray. You need to know that a gamma ray is an electromagnetic wave of very high frequency and energy. Next we have ionization. Ionization is the addition or removal of an electron from a neutral atom. And you'll probably already know that this will result in a positive or a negative ion. Moving on, we have activity. And the activity of a radioactive source is defined as the number of nuclear decays or disintegrations per second. So instead of nuclear decays, you can say disintegrations and you'll still get the mark for this. Absorbed dose is our next one, and this is defined as the energy absorbed by a material per unit mass. Or in other words, it's the energy absorbed by a material for one kilogram of mass. Moving on, we have equivalent dose. An equivalent dose is defined as the absorbed dose multiplied by the radiation weighting factor, and this just comes from the equation for equivalent dose. Next we have the equivalent dose rate, and this is defined as the equivalent dose per unit time, or the equivalent dose each second. Our next definition is for the half-life of a radioactive source. So what we mean by the half-life is the time taken for the activity of a radioactive source to decrease to half its original value. Moving on, we have nuclear fission. And nuclear fission is defined as the process in which an unstable, heavy atomic nucleus splits into two or more lighter nuclei called fission fragments with energy being released. And it's this energy that is released that can go on to heat up the water in a nuclear fission reactor. Next we have a chain reaction, and this is something that can happen in nuclear fission reactors. So this is when neutrons released in nuclear fission reactions go on to hit other nuclei, causing further fission reactions and the cycle repeats. And it's really important to mention the neutrons in this definition. The process may be controlled, such as in nuclear reactors, or uncontrolled, such as in a nuclear bomb or nuclear weapon. Next we have nuclear fusion, and this is the process of small nuclei joining together to form a larger nucleus with energy being released. So you could think about nuclear fusion as sort of being the opposite to nuclear fission, where instead of having a larger nucleus splitting into fission fragments, we have smaller nuclei that are joining together. And lastly we have plasma containment, which is related to nuclear fusion. Plasma containment is the use of powerful magnetic fields to prevent hydrogen plasma from physically touching any parts of a nuclear reactor, because if it does, it's going to melt it. And this is done using powerful superconducting magnets. That's all for this video folks, I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.